Welcome back. Continuing from where we left off, we are still on the Oracle architecture and we want to continue from there and we proceed. To Remember in the previous section we saw how the users get connected to the database and we saw the different processes that start. The server process, the user process on the device, then the server process, the PGA. But apart from that, remember we have the instance in one side. You shouldn't forget that. Before you access the database, the user must first get connected to the instance. The instance is the gateway to the database. If you, your connection to the instance is a failure, there is no way you will proceed to the database. You cannot access anything from the database. So we need to first look at these two things, the instance and the database, the ones we connect to, the ones we need to get information from. So we need to first look at what is in the instance and what is in the database. Right now we know that in the instance we have the background processes and memory. But what are those background processes and what are those memory structures? Then when we talk about the database, we have files. But what are those database files? So in this section, we're going to focus on just that. What is in the instance and what and what is in the database? GA. We're going to begin with the instance. Remember I say the instance? Is made up of the memory and the back of one processes. So under the memory, we have two things. We have the PGA and then the SGA. Those are, those are the two memory structures we have. Remember you saw in the previous section that the PGA is a memory structure and its work is to ensure that the user gets the requests. It works with the PGA works with the server process to ensure that the client's requests are satisfied. The, remember we have the user process. The moment the client sends a request, maybe I need a photo, maybe I need information, maybe I need some new messages that were posted on Twitter or Instagram. It is the server process that works hand in hand with the PGA to ensure that you get that information from the database back to your device. And if you need to send anything, maybe you're posting an image, maybe you're updating a username or a password or anything, that message is got from your device, then posted to the server process, a process that works with the PGA, and then the message is sent to the database. That is the work of the PGA. Apart from that, it also stores the user session variables, user session details. For example, to store it, to know that somebody connected at this time. Maybe Abraham store. Abraham connected at this time and they left at this time. That is the user session. Remember this user session just showed that someone connected to the database with this username at this time. That is the user session. All this information is stored in the PGA. And when you look at it, indeed, the information in this PGA, that the information contained in the PGA is private information. And that is why the PGA is a private memory structure. It's not shared. Apart from the PGA, we have what we call the system global area or the SGA. The SGA is a public memory structure and it has two components. It has the compulsory parts and the optional parts. It's really a big memory structure. And without it, we cannot use the database look at the mandatory we shall pay much attention to the mandatory and then it also has some optional components you go and look at in the mandatory we have the database buffer the redo log buffer and the shared pool let's begin with the database buffer the database buffer stores information that has been modified by the user temporarily assuming you are making a change you are making an edit to your username or you are posting an image or you are posting a, a text to your friend or anything or anybody before that information is stored in the database before that information is stored in the database it is first stored in the call sga specifically a component called the database buffer that is where it is stored temporarily it has somewhere where it will be stored in the database remember we are in the memory structures, the instance. The instance doesn't store stuff permanently, but everything is stored in the database. So in this database buffer is where we store all the modified data blocks, all the modified changes, all the changes that have been made to data temporarily. That is the database buffer, and it is in the instance. 
under a memory structure we call the system global area component. Then we have another SGA component we call the redo log buffer. For it, it stores the SQL statements. But not every SQL statement that has been used is store a SQL statement that calls a change to that. I told you that. This is why I told you that you need to have some little bit understanding of SQL. It's, you can look at my SQL course. Again, you can look at my SQL course using the link above here. So the redo log buffer stores a SQL statement that calls a change to data. Not every SQL statement will be stored in the redo log buffer. No. Only the SQL statement that calls a change to data. For example, if you update anything, if you delete anything, if you insert or you create new data, those are the statements that are stored in the redo log buffer and they are called the DMO statement or the data manipulation language statements. These SQL statements are stored in the redo log buffer temporarily, but looking at where they are stored permanently, they have a permanent file where they are stored and we shall be looking at that file when we are looking at the storage structures. Then we have the third component known as the shared pool. The shared pool stores SQL statement execution plans and many other things like the data dictionary etc. Now what happens whenever you issue a SQL statement in your database, Oracle go through a process before it returns out the result. If you if you make a query to the database, maybe you need some first name or you need some information from the database. Oracle, before it returns the results to you, it will first go through a process. And that process takes a lot of time and energy to return the results of the query back to you. But you're not the only one who's using the database. There are so many people who are issuing queries to the database. We don't want our database to be overstrained. So whenever you issue a statement or you issue a query to the database, the execution plan, the, the process the database go through is stored in the shared pool. And such that if there is somebody who comes and they are interested in the same query, Oracle will just use the process is stored in the shared pool to return the results back to another user. That is the work of the shared pool. Apart from these three components, the mandatory components, we also have other components like the Java pool, the swim pool, the large pool, and the results cache. You can just go and look at them. We can try to look at these components practically. So we are going to run our SQL command. There are so many tools we can use to manage and administer Oracle database. But for our case, we are going to use the SQL plus command line. It's really a wonderful tool if you really need to understand these concepts really at your fingertips. So we shall be using the SQL command line and I recommend you to to use this tool when you are administering databases apart from some complex complex areas. But you can use other tools like the enterprise manager. For us to be able to see these components, we need to connect as administrators. We need to connect as DBAs. We have many administrative user accounts but we are going to use the administrative account we call system when you are typing the password it won't show you that it is being typed but put it in mind that the password is being typed so we need to look at these memory structures the sga and we see we shall be looking at these the v dollar to understand what they mean for now just know it's a table we get the information for sga when you run you can see that we have a lot of memory structures you can see the redo log buffer the database buffer, the shared pool, the large pool, etc. That is how we can look at the memory structures. How do we configure memory in Oracle? We have two ways of configuring memory. We have the dynamic or what we call the automatic memory configuration where, where memory is configured by Oracle automatically. You don't need to do anything. The only thing you need to do is to provide Oracle with the memory target that how much memory do you want to us to use as a benchmark, as a basis when we are allocating memory to different components. With a manual approach, it is the DBA to determine which component needs more memory, which one needs less memory. It's really risky to leave everything managed by DBA. Let us look at everything in an illustration. So we are having a server where Oracle is installed Whenever we install it on the machine, we are having the instance and then we are having the database. 
we are focusing on the instance in this section and then in the instance we are having the PGA and the SGA as the memory components then we are having the database buffer remember we said its work is to store the modified data blocks temporarily everything is temporary in the instance then we are having the redo buffer or the redo log buffer or the log buffer they store the SQL statements that cause a change to the data temporarily then we are having the shared pool all these are SGA components but that doesn't mean that it is the only thing that is in the instance we are having the PGA on one hand then we are having some backup one processes we shall be looking at that later then down here we are having the database with the data file we do log files the different files and then these make up the database we are going to look at all these in detail